We're going to take a look at our ocean shader in Maya 2016, just to show how it works in here, which is pretty much the same as uh, older versions of Maya, but there's just a little bit of a different UI. So this is just kind of an out of the box scene. I haven't tweaked it too much, but you can see some nice ocean waves here with this kind of sunset HDR. And we could certainly tweak it more in the foreground to have more waves here, but I'm just gonna show an out of the box, um, just, just kind of how this works. So first of all, we just have a very plain, uh, plain geometry and our environment light, which has our day dusk HDR, which you can find on our website. And I've plugged in an ocean surface. These are all the defaults. So when you just load this shader plugin, this SLO, I didn't change anything. And then our ocean displacement. The displacement it is what makes the waves on this geometry and the ocean surface it does some nice ocean ocean surface shading. And it's got depth based fog, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, white caps, a lot of different parameters in here. Now for this example, our ocean surface is a SLO shader, so that means we're gonna have to be in RenderMan's raise mode sometimes it gets a little confusing so if i do render man this is in your top menu as well we got to make sure we're in raise because if we're in ris by default <laughs> it's not going to render the surface so it's a little bit confusing with these two renders going on at the same time in future versions of render man it's going to be only ris mode um, but for this example we're going to do raise and you can use our displacement shader in ris mode as well you just have to swap out the different surface shader so let's disconnect our displacement shader. So the out color, if I click onto the shading group here, I'm just gonna break this connection. I can just select that and delete it. So how do you set this up from scratch if you're not bringing in the scene file? Well, these two are both, we can see it just says render man shader for the surface shader and it says render man shader for the displacement shader. So if you're doing it from scratch, you just hit tab into the node editor or you can go into the old hypershade here and I've expanded it and under render man rays shaders, there's render man shader. So you can just click this if you're using the old hypershade. I kind of like to use the node editor. So in here I just hit tab and I'm going to type either render man or render man shader. So I get that, it drops it in, it automatically creates a shading group. And for RenderMan shader, I'm just gonna plug in our SLO. So I'm gonna go to my workspace root because I've set up my Maya workspace. I'm gonna go into shaders and I'm gonna put, for example, our surface shader or our displacement shader. We need both. So if I connect that, all the sh parameters come up and that's basically what I have here. And then you have to look into your shading group and make sure that the displacement shader is connected to displacement material or the surface material for the surface shader. So you can do that manually. So now I just have the ocean su surface uh, connected. So let's just see what that render looks like. I'm going to hit render. And it's going to go to local queue. I'm going to bring this up. So it's just going to do a flat grid as expected and it does a nice little reflection. And there's nothing much there. So just wanted to show that first, but now let's connect our displacement shader. So we saw it before it had out color. So I'm gonna select out color and I'm gonna go into displacement shader. So if that option isn't up there, you can always do other, do displacement shader, close that. Now, when I click on here in my shading group, I can see it's connected easily. to see displacement material correctly goes here and surface material goes here. So now let's hit a render. I'm gonna stop this old one. So that's just a plain grid. So as soon as we drop in our displacement shader, well, we're ultimately gonna get that, um, but we can see it starting to render here. And if we wait for it to finish, it'll look like that. So just a couple things to note when you drop in your displacement shader, if we click on it here,
you'll notice at the top I have render man attributes and I've got all this extra stuff here. So when we're doing high frequency displacement mapping like this with our shader and it's all procedural, there's no textures driving this displacement. It's all kind of these procedural noises. You have all these values that you can play with and we go over them in some of our other YouTube videos. But I've got some very important things here like displacement bound, displacement space, derivatives extrapolate, all this fancy stuff. So why is that in here and how do you put it in? Because when you first drop in a shader, it's not there. So let's do that again. I'm just going to do shader. And if we put in our displacement shader, We got nothing up top. So you just have to go attributes, render man. And that might be going off screen a little bit here, but add displacement attributes. So you do that and then it makes this thing at the top. And the displacement bound, you have to set it pretty high, like five. Otherwise you'll get this kind of tearing that you saw there. So even in the preview, if it's zero, you can see there's all these like black uh, weird artifacts and you'll actually get that in your scene. So you got to set that pretty high so to let render man know you're going to be displacing geometry might have to set it to world space uh, if you're getting really slow renders. So try the different displacement spaces between shader and world. And in general, if I go to manage attributes, again, might be a little bit off screen. A lot of different attributes in here like der derivatives extrapolate, that just gets rid of some artifacting. Um, dice raster oriented dicing, that's the way it um, tells render man to break up the geometry. And raster orient means it's based on screen space, but if you're doing these grazing angles like here and you want finer detail in here you might have to turn off raster oriented dicing and it does kind of this it's called world space dicing so a couple of those parameters to play with if you're doing if you're not seeing the fine detail um, that you're seeing in here our scene file that we distribute has this already set up but just so you know what those do and go ahead and just try those settings like right out of the box and you'll you know you'll get you'll get your nice high frequency wave patterns that we have here and you can also animate if you change the frame if you set an expression here to set it on the current frame you can animate this one two three four five and it'll actually move the waves along so that's really neat to try so give that a shout this is renderman 20 in maya 2016 in raise mode using our ocean shader